Hey everyone. The bed I want. It's nothing special. Well, I shouldn't say that the soil is listening. It's good. It's good soil actually. Um, it's like sandy, sandy soil, just like with the Chesapeake Bay. Going tobaccos and tomatoes probably. I don't see why not. Uh, I'm just gonna continually share updates with this abandoned lot project, which is going to be here for my food security. And today I'm breaking ground with my broad fork and just to relieve some stress, it's this leg day. And this spot right here, I got a pepper ready. I'm just gonna stick a pepper in the ground with a basil plant next to it and put some hay on it. And this garden will evolve in a, a random fashion. Sunflowers. It's with the local neighbor kids. Beats, beats being in the streets. All right, all right, all right. Remember this. In rain-fed systems, plant things closely. And this is the idea behind a permaculture guild. So in the center, we have the bell pepper. In the back, we have a bean plant, which is gonna grow up somewhere. Um, basil, chard, shizo, another basil. Chard, chard, amaranth, also called kaolu. And this is my basic guild. They will support each other. And yes, through the trash and through the old glass, this is the magic of nature. This is the principle of nature, is renewal and regeneration. So before you, on your way to manifest your off-grid property, know that there is some opportunity out there for you to create that microcosm and let it flow. Om Namaha. Now I'm gonna put some tulsi right by the entrance. We're, we're in the back alleyway and I want people to be greeted with the smells. Not only that, tulsi is traditionally in India and in South Asia planted near entrances um, and where Tulsi is happy, they say that the goddess dwells there. So. This bed is made with a plain old hoe. Okay, here's the second guild. Tulsi and Chitonia, Mexican sunflower. And just a nice little garden reminder that include drought tolerant plants in your rain fed systems uh, like the Mexican sunflower and also combine shallow rooted and deep rooted plants together deliberately in your polycultures like anything in the mint family or lettuce is a good one shallow roots anything that's really tall it's reaching down you know it so and the final guild polyculture is corn, beans, and squash. And I broke this up with a broad fork and I'm going to use the Hopi planting method. And perhaps the biggest reason I, I'm doing this here is not to yield a ton of corn here. And why I practice the Hopi method is because it is a prayer. It The, the number, there's four paces between every hole. There's a big handful of seeds per hole. Of course, that has practical applications in rain-fed permaculture. And you can even grow it in the desert this way. But this is an act of prayer. This is this is sacred. And just between you and me, like, this is an altar. This is where I'll come. I'll do my yoga kathi, where I'll give offerings to the land, bring some, some water and pour it out, bring some food, leave little scraps, get the flowers moving get regeneration going so yes 
planting corn as a prayer and as an offering. And right when the big rain is coming in. My girlfriend's helping me. Um, <laughs> four paces between holes represents the four directions. The yeah, the mom mama corn has four kernels at its end in a perfect geometric shape, and that is the one for the newborns. So we're just digging holes. Look at these beauties. Gray speckled palapi cowpeas, seeds in their stories. All the ancient hands that touched them. Okay, so my girlfriend came through and the aesthetic has just been bumped up up in here. So talk about regeneration. From the crumbling ruins, you know, we build up and that's just nature's biggest lesson, so welcome and that's all for today but just we got the tulsi the sunflowers uh and we got more sunflowers and buckwheat bell peppers chard basil beans and then the corn and the beans and the squash and i will share updates as the space evolves <laughs> Grocers will have this stuff for free in coffee halls. Filled with nitrogen for the corn. Put your mouth down. And that's how we do the rain thread. What's the answer? It's to keep the water in. And yeah, when we when we don't have water from a tap or you don't even want to use tap water, you don't want to be watering all the time, this stuff is the best. Mulch in any form you can get it. Wood chips, coffee hulls, fall and straw. And what it does is it feeds the microorganisms ultimately. Get a thick, thick cover on. And the microorganisms are actually the ones that do all the watering. The carbon, people think of carbon as just some sterile element, but that's the life forms in the water and in the, in the soil. Aww. Just tucking in our babies. <laughs> again, regeneration. Fertility is innate. Soil is an inside job. <laughs> soil, topsoil. It's a renewable regeneration. Generating resources. Intention though, it, and you can apply permaculture and plant things close to each other, but it takes intention and putting good intentions in to whatever you're working.